So we're here at Arizona Archery Club and we're doing some vein testing. And one of the things we're doing, we're trying to uh, prove or disprove uh, how much drag is imposed on an arrow um, when you have a heavy helical versus uh, very little helical. So we're shooting one degree, three degree, and five degree helical and seeing if there's a difference in speed. Now we're using a lab radar it's clocking speed at the bow at 10 yards, 20 yards, 30 yards, 40 yards, 50 yards, and it's going to give us a speed readout, and we'll be able to tell incrementally if there's actually a drag, or if it's actually slowing down uh, faster than it would normally with less helical. We're also going to test to see if uh, if there's a difference, like the bow that we're shooting naturally spits arrows out they want and they want to spin left they, we clock when if you clock the bow it naturally wants to come out spinning left we want to see if there is a, a speed increase if you shoot left hand or excuse me a left helical versus a right helical because at some point in the trajectory if it's coming out left from the bow and you have a right helical it's stopping and turning and going the other way so uh, we're going to disprove all that or prove and figure out what, uh, what's real and look at all the theories and see if we can't come up with a, with a solid um, explanation of what's happening. So now we uh, decided to move the testing outdoors and shoot the veins out to 80 yards to see what kind of performance we would get on them and also check the drag like we did indoors. Yeah, outdoor range and we're finishing up our vein testing. Um, what we're trying to see is if the arrow is slowing down uh, faster at long ranges if you're shooting a heavy helical. Basically seeing if it's worth um, giving up some stability when you're shooting broadheads um, to pick up speed or just pick up a better flight path. So far with the, we haven't been able to see anything um, with video that says that like a three degree or a five degree helical even um, shows any like disadvantages. So, this is the last test that we have. Um, and basically, if it shows that it's slowing down at some point in the flight, uh, we're also trying to see if shooting, like my bow naturally wants to shoot left. When, it, when, when I shoot, when I clock my arrows, it naturally comes out of the bow left. So if there is a speed disadvantage or an advantage of going one way or the other, like, and my theory is that it's coming out of the bow left at some point. It's uh, it's stopping and changing directions uh, because the veins are kicking in and trying to make it go right if you have a right helical. So let's see what happens. So we decided not to use the shooting machine for this process since we were mainly testing drag and not testing for accuracy. So. Um, the shot didn't have to be as perfect, uh, although I did take painstaking care to aim every single shot and uh, and get as accurate as a shot as I possibly can. But it was a very tedious process having to shoot through every single vein configuration and helical. Okay, over here is our uh, test results using the lab radar to determine the speed at uh, right at the bow, 10 yards, 30 yards, 50 yards, 65, and 80 yards. And it also gives you a kinetic energy at, at the bow and at 80 yards. And we've ranked them here according to that. You can see this is the percentage of loss. Let's start with the four fletch, uh, just so I can show you. On the average, the four fletch lost a higher percentage of speed per per setup so it didn't matter how many degrees of helical it had um, 
it is slightly higher. It it sheds velocity a bit a bit faster than it does with just a three, meaning there's probably more drag. Um, you can see it's slightly heavier arrow. The arrow is exactly the same, but the it's slightly heavier, 449 grains versus 443 grains, so six grains difference, uh, which of course in result, you see it comes out of the bow just a s touch slower, you know, two feet per second for six green grains. Um, but the percentage is what matters. You can see um, right here, the one degree loses speed, 11% of its speed um, by the time it gets to 80. Um, one of the things we did figure out was that left hand, so my, my bow, the arrow clocks or it wants to come out of the bow naturally uh, going left. And there is a mechanical advantage, there is a slight advantage to if your bow, if your arrows come out naturally left to put a left-handed helical on it and vice versa. As you can see here, the left three degree and the left five degree were the top two performers in this bow. Uh, they only lost 8%. Um, so it went one, two, and then for some reason, and everybody talks about having less degrees of helical, that if you have too much too much of a uh, helical on there that it slows the bow down and creates a parachuting effect. I believe that this occurs once the arrow slows down past 150 feet per second uh, based on what I've seen in research on recurves. But as you can see, at 80, at 80 yards, it's still traveling over 250 feet per second. Um, so even at out to 100 yards, it's probably going to be traveling, you know, 230, 240 feet per second. Um, so you're not going to get that parachuting effect, I don't believe. Um, the only way that I could create a parachuting effect is when I shot a flu flu arrow, um, and I could see that, and it, I could see that out past 60 yards where you you saw that back end. Other other time that I could see that with normal fletching. Uh, configurations was with extreme FOC um, over over 20 actually over 25 and I could see the back end getting squirrely um, but unfortunately I couldn't get that recorded because of the type of uh, high-speed camera I've had it was too hard to catch uh, outdoors with that uh, but I can visually see it myself shooting anyway so Long story short is having a higher degree of helical doesn't necessarily mean your arrow is going to slow down faster or create a parachuting effect. In fact, I am leaning towards the three degree. Um, probably going to shoot a left since mine's, mine's coming out of the bow naturally left. I might keep the right because of, you know, the way things screw in and all that, I'm, I'm a little worried about uh, the broadheads wanting to come undone once they hit an animal since I'm going to be shooting shooting a single bevel at times, which is going to aggravate that even more. Um, oh, that's another thing we, we realized. Definitely don't want to shoot a, um, a right single bevel on a left fletched arrow or, or, and vice versa. So whatever, if you're going to shoot a single bevel, you have to match the helical to it because it robs it of penetration. Uh, one of the times that we did it, um, I shot a left helical with a right single bevel, and it was a four inch, four inches difference of penetration. Um, so definitely don't want to do that because they oppose their opposing forces. Long story short, here, um, don't be afraid of putting helical. As far as I'm concerned and everything that I have seen, I'd much rather have good arrow stability. And um, I find that a higher degree of helical bucks the wind better, um, controls your, your broadheads better, and is better performance outside all around. 
So here we have a comparison of what I landed on. I think I'm going to personally shoot uh, is what I have been shooting. Is a three degree right helical. Uh, I still have a couple things I'm going to work out, but I can tell you um, that the reason why I'm going with the right is because of the whole threading of a broadhead and so on and so forth. And a lot of these broadheads don't have that little rubber grommet to keep them in. Um, and it, and I'm thinking about shooting a single bevel, um, so I'm not entirely sure that. I'll be able to get a left helical uh, single bevel that I like. Um, anyhow, so that's why I think I might stick with the three degree right helical. Uh, although there was a mechanical advantage to going with the three degree left helical, as I mentioned in the other. So if you look at these different veins, uh, the number that counts right here is this percentage of loss. And it's crazy because this Max Hunter is just under 6% percentage of loss. So over the flight of 80 yards, the trajectory of 80 yards, it loses the least amount of speed. It leaves the bow at 285 and it hits at 80 at 268 and a half. That's seven and a half feet per second faster than what I was shooting, which is the Blazer. Um, the caveat to that is I haven't found that the Max Hunter steers broadheads as well as the Blazer does. The groups are good, but the Blazers are much tighter. Um, the Max Stealth was a little bit better than the Max Hunter. The uh, AAE um, Hybrid, which is basically a Blazer vein, you know, steered the steer the broadheads very good and um they did have just 0.5 a percent less loss so that might be a consideration to get the best of both worlds get a little bit more uh, efficiency so but for now i'm sticking with the blazers on because i would rather have an, an accurate arrow than a faster arrow um so it might just be the tune on my bow and I'm kind of working on working through that right now. But for now, these are the numbers, consider them. Um, but if you really look at it, um, you know, except for the Max Hunter, you know, five, six, four, and even three are pretty much within a percent of each other. Um, but this is a, a much bigger jump up. So I, uh, I, I was pretty impressed with that number. Hopefully I can make the Max Hunters uh, steer the veins, as, or excuse me, steer the broadheads as well as the broad, uh, Blazers do. Uh, but if not, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go with the Blazer. So this is some really interesting data right here, not directly related to uh, vein testing, but we figured out during this process that every time we used a weaker spine arrow or loaded up the front and effectively created a weaker spine, the percentage of loss was a lot greater. Now, if you remember um, in the previous video, the Blazer three fletch, three degree helical, um, to the right, right, excuse me, three degree right helical uh, was about 9% loss. And this is what a 340 spine, that loss goes up to 11, 11.29. Uh, so consider that when you're thinking about super heavy FOC, if you're going to break down the spine of the arrow at a, to a certain point, uh, you you may not be the strings energy may not be transferring as efficiently over to the arrow because the arrow is flexing so much and absorbing a lot of that energy uh, before it leaves your bow um, if you think about you know 
pushing a bowling ball. This is a good example that uh, my buddy Cal, Cal Davison uh, brought up. You know, pushing a bowling ball with one of those pool noodles, it's going to have a hard time. But if you use that same pool noodle to push a softball, let's say, you should be able to do it pretty easy. So what happens is that you're, you, you have enough force to move that bowling ball, but it's getting transferred and bending into the noodle. So um, just keep that in mind that you don't want to break down your spine. You, you want to have more a stiffer spine uh, and get the most out of the power stroke of the ball.